Welcome to the show! Yes! Perfect day to start a show. Look, man. There's been tears in my eyes. Hey, welcome to the show. You know why I do outdoor shows like this? It makes me feel like I'm working as a team. As a team. That's how I feel. I don't have a team with me, but if I had a team with me, they'd be right behind me. I would have a team of a writer, director, I'm the creator slash anchor or managing editor. I would have a I would have the creator right here in the middle. I would have the executive producer, charge, vice executive producer, a producer, an editor, the man who holds the camera, something like that. They would all be in this credits and we would work together as a team to come up with a great show with great with serious issues. So Shows about dealing with serious tissue. We talked about this before for five years. And a bit later, we have a special surprise for you. Because in three because in a few weeks, it's my anniversary. It's my it's the five year anniversary of Game Break, and we're gonna have a party. So stick around for more details. Over eleven hundred new cases with five new deaths in the state of Texas, new twelve new cases with sky, no deaths. And since the fifth, over six hundred thousand tests have been taken. That's positive test, one percent positive in the last two, 21 hours. And since the 10th, 10,000 people have been hospitalized, over 16 people in ICU, 21 million, 21 million, at least one dose since yesterday. Some, and since, ever since yesterday again, 17.7 million have been fully really vaccinated. And in the U.S., 556 million doses in the U.S. In schools. Well, yesterday there was only one junior high student had COVID, the rest were zeros. And today, two two schools, two separate schools have COVID. One was from an elementary staff, and the other was a primary student. What about the rest? The rest were zeros. It's good. That just shows to teach people that you need to be vaccinated. If your child's scared of getting vaccinated, then it's okay for them to ask questions, talk to their doctor. If they're scared or it's against their religion, okay, I get it. Probably nobody has the right to be asking questions like that. And even if, I mean, probably no one has the right. So, of course, everybody has a right. I mean, if you're scared of getting the vaccine, you can always ask questions. I mean, I mean after the second, I, mean, I didn't even ask questions about the, the second dose because I experienced a side effect. After a while, I took a Tylenol. Ibuprofen, and, and by the time that happened, I felt okay. I felt better. So it's okay. It's okay to ask questions. But what it comes down to is whether you're on the mandatory zone or whether you're in the optionary zone. So let me show you. Say that this sidewalk here is the mandatory. Let's say, for instance, you're not vaccinated and you have to follow the mandates. Where would you go? Would you be here? Nope. Why not? Because if you, because if you're, because if you're, if you're in here, you would get everyone affected. So where would you go? You would go right where I'm standing. What if you had one dose of the vaccine? You still be on the. Uh, So it's really a, it's a, it's a scenario play like any other. Just try try it out with your kids, and maybe they'll they'll understand and get the picture. So this is optionary. This is mandatory. And optionary, mandatory, optionary, mandatory, optionary. Mandatory, optionary, mandatory, optionary. And what happens when your kids are, I mean, if your kids don't know that, then maybe practice this technique with them. With the light side, dark side. Have them, this exercise will work. It'll teach them that if you're on the, if you're on the dark side, 
you're still in the mandatory zone, but if you're on the light side, which is the good side, then you're mandatory. Here's how it goes. Light side, dark side, light side, dark side, light side, dark side. That's how, that's how it works. And now I'll teach them. Now that I'll have a new neurological path in the brain and have to realize, oh, this is what can happen. But, speaking of which, let's go to the tips now, we always do. Masks, like I told you before, here, not here, not here, up the nose. Vaccinated, you're in the optionary zone like we talked about. If social distance, six feet, between me and the gate, we're almost six feet away. Hand wash, again, wash your hands. Soapy water, 110 degrees, hot water. If you're in the restaurant, you gotta do the same thing every half hour to an hour. Plus, you need to make sure that you disinfect your area. They have disinfectant wipes. You have Lysol. If you have those things, it'll help disinfect your area. Then we can all be safe. Medical control, no point. If you're quarantined, five days. After the fifth day, you can test it again. If you're negative, you're clear to do whatever you want. If you're not negative, another five days. In the case of Lisa Guerrero, she went, she violated, she, she probably violated her quarantine because she had COVID and she traveled. That's a big no-no. You stay at the house, period, and do it, and do it from a remote location. That's how it is. Come back. When we come back. I mean, when we come back. A case that made me outraged is the story about a. It's a story about a kid who just wanted to know about his grades, but it ended up being 15, 15 plus charges. We'll give you the inside story, and then later, and then later, a guy named Robert who appeared on The Price Is Right had a great voice that Drew decided, you know what? announcer for the day. He was a great announcer. Wait till you see. Wait till you see his voice or hear his voice. Don't go away. It's the story that's causing controversy in Las Vegas. A student assaulted a teacher that had, that had 15 charges plus and now sent him to court today. What we're talking about here is a, is a guy named Jonathan Martinez Garcia. Now, if you don't know this guy, he's a 16-year-old. He's a minor. Just like Ethan Cromley. He's now charged as an adult. Martinez has been charged with 15 counts of attempted murder, sexual assault, battery with intent to assault, first degree, kidnapping, robbery, and murder. Now let's read this. Tonight, now let's talk about this. And also, tonight, a new court date. So let's read you this. Tonight, new details into the investigation. The murder was a 16 year old juvenile. This happened on Thursday at 3.30 p.m. The police, the police arrest, the, the investigator said that the student went to the classroom to talk about his grades. And at some point, he became violent and started and started punching the teacher and strangled her until she lost consciousness. The suspect fled and, and he was found by another employee. He's now taken into custody, transported to the Clark County Detention Center, charged with attempted murder, sexual assault, battery with attempted attempt assault, first degree kidnapping, and robbery and burglary. Now it's interesting about this case, after that, teachers went on to protest to raise concern of safety, but the district is working on implementing the safety measures. And now just today, as hours ago, right after I started, right before I started filming, the media, it was released, they released his name because he's now charged as an adult. Jonathan Evel, Evel Toro Martinez Garcia, charged as an adult, he's still in jail and a $500,000 bond and will appear in court again within three weeks. That's May 6th. At that time, we'll let you know what goes on. So, 
you see this in black and white, I mean, it's all in color. You shouldn't can look at this case and compare and say to yourself, I mean, this is just like Ethan Crumbly. like this, it makes me angry that somebody would attack somebody who would defend our kids and that we pay our tax dollars for. This is all because of grades? Give me a break. I want to learn more how much I got paid. I want to go on frontal assault. I want to start punching him, kicking him, and going, why you little dirty, dirty, dirty. I wouldn't do that. No, what I would do is ask nicely. Go calmly and nicely. And if they, if they don't have time, then you tell me tomorrow, I'm like, I'll check in for I'll let you know. And you ask me again tomorrow, I'm like, okay, sure, no problem. We'll buy after, or talk about after school. I'm like, sure we can. Okay, I'll be by after school. See if I want to go on yelling, screaming, cursing, throwing fists, throwing punches, grabbing the chokehold like that, and then all of a sudden, he would, she would just punch him. The victim was a teacher. The teacher has not been identified yet, but we'll know soon enough as, as more of this story unfolds. What's interesting about this, so here's what's interesting about this case. This is very similar to what happened in Oxford, Michigan. During that time, there was a young man on November. His name was Ethan Crumley. He was charged as an adult because of what he did. I mean, now the parents are being charged with involuntary manslaughter. What's so interesting about the case is that the parents bought him a gun. And that have happened, possibly, incidentally, Incidentally, what would have happened here, there were injured teachers, injured students, and possibly a lot, a lot of people murdered. Because of what happened. Now, incidentally, if that was me, I would fess to the whole crime right away and accept my punishment, whether it be being expelled, suspended, detention, or whatever, but I would never, ever get a teacher. I would never even threaten a teacher. Even though you may think it's, like I said before, December 17th, after that shoot, after month after, probably um, weeks after the shooting, TikTok Channel National School Shooting Day, threaten your teachers, this, that, and the other. I talked about that TikTok Channel, and TikTok is working with law enforcement. That happened here at the Bluff. I wouldn't even be surprised. I'm sorry about that, it's very windy. There's nothing I can do. But it's not gonna change here is the fact that this guy, is that Martinez did something wrong, he crossed the line. And if I was that kid, the kid's parents, I would be high fiving him. I would take away his things, take away his TV, his video games, his toys. That's what I would take away. more innings left so question is what needs to be so what do I think needs to be done about this I'll try to better explain myself when we come back and give you my full fun of thought about this we'll be right back now for an update on this 
topic, on an issue we talked, about, we focused on last week. Last week, last week, an updated topic about as American as we looked into some of the baseball issues. The one thing we talked about during that death, the as American as time was the apple pie. I told you the best apple pie. The best apple pie was. Golden Corral. A lot of other people said Popeyes. I don't think Popeyes sells apple, that apple pie. Churches sells apple pie. And what I forgot to mention was that Churches sells apple pie. That's the one thing I forgot to mention. And a lot of people have said Popeyes and I don't know, possibly still doing Golden Corral probably the best apple pie ever. Back in a moment, Warren, give me a break. We're talking about an incident that happened in Las Vegas just weeks, just a week ago, prior, prior to this. Now, last week, we, we focused on a student named Jonathan Martinez Garcia, who was charged with 15 counts of sexual assault, aggravated attempted murder, etc. This is the case, this, this whole case, this case was about a student, not someone who wanted another grade, but ended up, but the victim ended up unconscious. Now, I got a lot to say here. When it comes to everything that's happened, I got a lot to say when it comes to this case. In this case, and things that really frustrate me was the name being disclosed. That was very, very, that's very outrageous. It's very outrageous. If I hear something like, heard something like that, then I wonder what, what the hell is going on? Why isn't war being enforced? Why, why didn't the prosecution hear Karen McDonald's claim? I mean, that's because of the school shooting. But this happened again. We, will we do the same thing? Absolutely we would. Why? Because we don't want him to disclose his name. We don't want him to feel terrified. I mean, that's just another target for another school shooter. With the threats that happen, it's all because of the minors who deal with this crap. Who don't want to go to school. Don't want to be with their friends. Some, and this and that and the other. So... What you got here is two people who are charged as an adult. One from Michigan and one from Las Vegas. Two people who are now charged as an adult. And I'm gonna tell you something, if, th if that was me, if somebody said, if somebody attacked me, if you came up here and attacked me any time before because you wanna know what the show's about, I'd be quite up in your face. I wouldn't be right up in your face. I would just nice to check what the show's about. I wouldn't, like, if someone came in here and assaulted me, I'm not going to fight back. I'm going to report it. But, I'll tell you something right now. If I was in that kid's shoes, but, and the parents in this case didn't even know. I mean, you can't possibly understand what this and that's all about. You can't even understand about what goes on here? I mean, look at what he's doing. I mean, look, he's probably failing his class. He's probably probably failing his classes. He's probably doing this. He's probably doing that. Look at what he's writing on the walls. Look at what he's playing in the future. Look at this! Oh, he's doing! It was his behavior and his consequences. Everyone else's. He is a victim of what's going on at the parent level. So, yeah, we'll be updating this case and we'll tell you what happens. Back in the world. When we come back, the price of eggs has gone up because of the bird flu. Don't go away. The flu season is upon us. Which type will we have to worry about and what kind of shoes will we take? Now the latest, it's the latest on the bird flu. Now the latest on the bird flu, the price of eggs has gone up. Those 
Captain Perkins, you better watch out because the price of eggs has gone up. I don't know how much, but we do know what happened. It's because of the bird flu. Because birds make the eggs that we need to eat. And probably during the H1N1 swine flu, it was all about the eggs at that point. Bottom line here is, know what the price of eggs is if you know what you get. Cheapest brand ever would probably be HB, Walmart brand, probably in that range, but everything else, pretty much expensive. And we're back in the moment with a uh, game show moments. Family Feud and Price is Right. Do you like the more important show? Nothing makes you feel any good than just. Nothing makes you feel any better than 225 pound, 220 pound baby in the afternoon. Not two in the afternoon. That's not depressing on any level. But if you heard the news weeks ago, this year is going to be Maury's last year for season 22. He is now retiring after three decades of the show. He started the show back in 1991, and then years later became. The subject of you are not the father. So we wish him many thanks. You watch Price is Right. I wish you feel any better than just hearing the words come on down and hearing the great announcer George Gray. They had this one person on who, who they had this one person on for from the show that uh, they didn't win the car. He didn't win the car, but he had a great voice. So they had and the people Drew had the idea to have him announce for a day. And he had a great voice. So we give kudos to Robert for the great voice ever. I mean, I can be a great, great host. I'm sure not what you guys think. I mean, I can be a great voice. You guys don't watch Family Feud? Well, that makes you feel any good than just uh, laughing at Steve Harvey's antics and finding the more funny moments ever, but. There is an issue I do have to worry about, though, and that is the explicit answers. I mean, it's very different. I mean, all this started back in 1999. The question was, actually it was when Ray Combs hosted. It was name a part of a specific body that women tried to accentuate. One person said the beat, rest, and then all of a sudden, and then the other one was, a slight under means why he it rhymes with which. And then all of a sudden, everyone and another one. And if someone has a man from keeping the person, he says she says condoms, and then the other condom question was like, name something name something people wore to bed, nightcap, sweatsuit, and then the other one was condoms. And then 1999, Louis Anderson. Name a part of the body gets bigger as adults get older. You know what that guy said? <laughs> and uh, in '99, part of the body is '99. He said winky. He said winky. And then years later, when Steve Harvey came, the question was: Name a part of the body that's bigger than it was when you were 16. She says the medical term could have said winky. And then 2012 hits. It's the same thing. The dong, the whopper. It's like the cute stuff. Stay with the joke. Joko, let's start playing right now. You're painting this. Everybody goes, oh Lord, oh Lord. Did he have to say that? And then all of a sudden, they were part of the body that if hair whipped from it, they start crying. The an number one answer was chest. He goes a little bit lower and says, a beat, and he says, winky. And then all of a sudden, Everyone started laughing. Now, what's the bottom line? It's watch it without an adult. You can. I mean, we don't want to hear people say like obvious questions. I mean, we want to hear a little laughing, like in this, like in this, this question right here. Name something that follows the word pork, and this guy says coupon. That's in the funny section. That.
and then another one from years and oh, Mega 2013, name some of the students below the way. She says Winky, and then everyone goes. <laughs> so what's the bottom line here, guys? If you're gonna watch Family Feud, watch it with the parent. Family Feud has the word family in it. In other words, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, kids. That's family. And that's all for this edition of Give Me Break Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow for Give Me Break Give Me Break Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. Oh, there's another one. All this month, I'm gonna sell. We're celebrating the one five-year anniversary of the show. And to do that, we're gonna be counting down the top five, top five to fifteen moments of this show. And coming in at number fifteen was just a moment ago to where, just a moment. I'll describe. I'll describe to where was there's a honk and there's several honks, and I couldn't even finish my sentence. So. What had happened was, I had to start over. Now, if I had that tape, I would play it for you, but I decided to shut it down. Good. Number 15. Number 14 was a guest that we had. Number 14. The greatest one ever, the greatest one where we had live audience members was the one that was as American as. This was last week. I talked about apple pie. I started asking all these questions. Like, what's your favorite apple pie? One person. Can't have a health high professional one person said Popeyes. And I said the greatest apple pie was was Golden Corral. <laughs> so that's all. So that's just some of the moments. That's 14 out of that's two out of 15 moments. Count it down. Tune in tomorrow for another outrageous give me a break when Wednesday. And the next number. And our five-year countdown. Until next time, America.